Well, hi, Elena. I enjoyed your presentation earlier, and I just want to ask you a few follow-up questions. Why do you think IPE is important? I think IPE is important for several reasons. Big picture, looking at the impact of team-based care, collaborative practice, and its impact on patient satisfaction, quality of patient outcomes, decreasing patient costs, and increasing provider satisfaction. So there's that quadruple aim piece that comes into play. Um, but I think also IPE is important because if we're teaching this and doing this when folks are students, we're getting them ready for practice when they jump into practice. For those of us who did not have the, I'll say, pleasure, opportunity um, of IPE when we were trained, it took us several months, some of us maybe years, to get to the point of being able to feel really comfortable as a member of a team. We're trying to get people, students, health profession students, team ready by the time they graduate. So they're not scurrying to do that after they graduate. That makes a lot of sense. So in addition to patient outcomes and helping to meet the quadruple aim, what are other outcomes of IPE? Some of the things that we've observed as far as other outcomes of IPE include just the, um, the friendships that the students create and realizing that you know, it's, yes, you're a medical student and I'm a pharmacy student and you're a PT student, but you know, there are more things that are similar to our training than are different. There are more things that are similar to why we chose our professions than there are things that are different. One of the things that we have recognized and we've heard from some of our alumni who come back, they continue to keep in touch with their colleagues from the other professions after they graduate. And I view the whole IPE team training of students, um, I go back to, uh, as a child, I remember, I think it was a commercial for Prell or something where they tell two friends and they tell two friends and they tell two friends. And I view the IPE training piece as something like that. that it's going to take some time, but the students who are trained that way, they go out and talk to other po folks about how they were trained that way and how they expect to practice that way. And it it will have a ripple effect um, so that you know hopefully in the next decade or two this it's we see it everywhere like networking is a huge component an important component and patient-centered care yes yes the networking and the patient-centered care are a huge piece of it when this patient-centered care is kind of the the center of the training it gets all the disciplines on board it doesn't matter what discipline you're talking about because they're all in it for the patient care um, that's the piece that's that's common across the board. Another question, many practicing providers see interprofessional collaborative practice as something that's always been done. How are the current efforts different from what's always been done? I think, um, you know, in speaking to folks in practice, like, oh, well, we've always done it that way. Well, always done it, meaning you've always worked around and with other disciplines. But that piece that's different is really training the students to communicate well with other disciplines, teaching them as students what the roles and responsibilities are of other disciplines, of what it means to exhibit really good teamwork skills and to share the same values and ethics. You know, when we talk about the core competencies, those are the four main areas we're talking about. But that the students, you know, when the faculty say, we've always done it that way, mm, I'm not sure that that definition of IPE about from and with it is part, it wasn't part of my training, and I don't think it was part of the training of probably the bulk of, of faculty out there right now, and even of clinicians. Um, so it was kind of learn as you go, whereas this is more intentional teaching of those elements, again, back to where the students are practice ready when they leave, as opposed to figuring it out on their own later. Yes, that's very important, I think. And so it brings a question to mind. Many universities, I'm assuming, are not using IPE training their healthcare professionals. So what do you think somebody should do to get started? Um, one of the things that, you know, my background is pharmacy. At Jefferson, where I'm from, we have other disciplines such as medicine, PT, OT, I'm going to miss people, we have so many, but the whole IPE, it's a continuum, and people just need to pick some place to start. 
pick a program, get together, get faculty together, whether it's, you know, one of the, the cases we're doing today, it's a patient case where we're asking students to come up with who would the team be that takes care of this patient, you know, an activity such as that, that you get faculty from different disciplines to sit down and put together a case and then walk the students through figuring that case out, what would they do as an interprofessional team? So one, they are learning about the roles of other people in that team. They're learning from the other roles on the team. And then as a team together, the with part, they're putting a plan together. Um, so it can be things starting simple, and then you build upon those things. There are always logistical challenges and those types of things, but if people stop saying we can't, and start thinking about we can, um, it, it gets there, but it, but it is a continuum. And across the country, regardless of what health professions, discipline you're looking at, we're all somewhere on that continuum. There are folks who are just starting, there are folks who have been doing it for a decade or more, and then there are the folks in the middle who, okay, we got things started, how do we continue with the momentum? So there is that continuum. And I think using the resources that are out there for programs that are just starting, you know, using the Nexus website in, in Minnesota and seeing what all is out there, using the, um, the AIHC and some of the other organizations that have wonderful materials and some of the, we now have interprofessional education conferences that happen, you know, making sure that people take advantage of these to get some ideas, take bits and pieces and what might work for you. Basically, it sounds like you have to start, university programs have to start from the bottom up. The faculty have to be interested in it and then start networking with other faculty members and get excited about it and want to teach some classes that involve IPE. Yes, it is. It actually goes the gamut, I would say. So you have the faculty members who are very interested in moving it forward, but those faculty members need the support of administration. So it, it is an effort that I think everybody has to be on board with because it does require faculty time, it does require effort, it requires planning, all of those things require money and resources. So, you know, it is something that really everyone has to be on board with. Um, but if that excitement is there from the faculty, it goes a long way, both directions, relative to the students and the administration.